Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem surrounded regions. This is a pretty interesting problem and I think you're going to be really surprised by the solution that we come up with today. And I definitely think this problem is well worth your time. So now let's get into it. In this problem, we're given an M by N matrix board containing only X's and O's. And we want to capture all regions that are four directionally surrounded by X's. And by the way, capturing a reason, I don't know if you can hear that flight noise, there's an airplane above, but let's continue the problem. Capturing a region is defined by flipping all of the O's into X's if and only if those O's happen to be surrounded by X's. And this is best understood with an example. So let's take a look at this input board. This is the input board and this is the result. So how do we get to the result? Well, take a look at the board. Here we have two different regions of O's. This is one region. Let me use a different color. This is one region and this is the second region. Why are these separate regions? Aren't they connected diagonally? Well, yeah, they're connected diagonally, but remember, look above, we only want four directionally surrounded, right? So basically, these cannot be connected diagonally. They have to be connected uh, horizontally or vertically like these three are. So these are two separate regions. In the result, you can see that this region was flipped, right? One of the regions was flipped, right? Why was this region flipped? Because take a look, it's surrounded by X's, right? There's an X here, X here, X here, X here, X here, X here. Uh, by the way, actually, we don't care about this X because this X is diagonal, right? We care about horizontal and vertical X's. So this X, this X, this X, this X, and I think this is the last X, right? It's surrounded by all X's. So therefore, we can capture this region. When we say capture, we mean convert the O's into X's, as you can see in the output. What about the second region? Isn't this region also surrounded by X's? Why didn't we flip it in the output? Well... Let's take a look. This is has an X on the left of it, has an X above it, has an X to the right of it, but at the bottom, there's no X. It's on the border, right? So because this region is connected to the border, we're not gonna flip it, right? So basically, any regions that are not connected to the border are going to be flipped, only the regions that are not connected to the border. So how can we solve this problem? Should we run a DFS on you know the entire board and then try to figure out somehow which regions are not connected to the border and then flip them? Well, definitely that is possible, but depending on how you do it, that's a complicated approach actually. There are many ways to solve this problem. I'm going to show you a slightly clever and easy way to solve this problem, but I think you can actually learn a lot from the type of solution I'm going to show you. It has to do with reversing the way you think about the problem what I and some people like to call reverse thinking. So let's get into that solution right now. So up above, you can see the example that we're trying to solve, this general problem we're trying to solve. But before we even get into that, let me just kind of ask you a simple question. Let's say I had a piece of paper like this one. Let's say I cut it like this, right? I have a small region over here called A. This is the A portion of the paper. And I have a other portion. This is the B portion of the paper. Let's say I want to keep only this portion. I only want to keep the A portion of the paper. So how can I ask for the A portion of the paper? Well, I can say only give me A, right? Only the A portion of the paper. That's the simple way to talk about it. But a more complicated and kind of a useless way to talk about it in English at least would be would be to say, give me everything in the paper except for B, right? Give me this entire paper except for B, right? Just cross B out. Just give me everything except for B. Why would you say that when you can just say, just give me A, right? Of course, that's the simple way to say it. But sometimes this reverse way of thinking can be helpful, especially in programming. I'm sure you guys already have kind of experienced that. So how is this going to be helpful? in this problem. Let me explain. In the problem, they told us to capture, they told us to capture the surrounding regions only, right? Only the surrounding regions. 
In other words, only this region that's surrounded. Another way, the opposite way of saying that is capture everything except the unsurrounded regions, right? I basically restated the first bullet point with a longer a sentence, right? Capture everything in this board except the unsurrounded regions, the regions that are not surrounded. In other words, capture the entire board except for this region because this region is not surrounded. How do we know that this region is not surrounded? Is there an easy way to figure that out? Yes, it's very easy because this region is connected connected to the border. Any any region in the board connected to the border, right? There were some O's over here, some O's over here, here, or down here. We are not going to capture those. So this is where things are going to get a little bit clever. I wouldn't expect most people to be able to figure this part out, especially beginners. How are we going to actually implement this, this second bullet point? Basically, we're going to go, we're going to scan through every border cell, right? Everything on the outside. We're going to look for any O's. We found one O over here, right? So we found one region that's not surrounded, right? We know for sure this region is unsurrounded because it's connected to the border. Now we're going to run a DFS on on this region because we don't want to capture it. How are we going to do that? Well, we're going to give it a temporary, uh, basically a temporary value. We're going to change all the O's into T's. So I'm going to change this O into a T right now this uh, this O is not connected to anything right it could be it could have been possible and maybe there's another O over here and it kind of forms this region that's connected to the border right and then we would change all of those into T's as well right but in this case, it's just a region of size one. So that's all we do. Now, why are we changing it to a temporary variable? Because remember, we're trying to capture everything except unsurrounded regions. So now we, we marked this as a as unsurrounded region, right? So now what are we going to do? We have this board. We're going to just do a double nested loop, iterate through every single row in this uh input grid and anytime we see an o value we're going to change it into an x because now we know for sure that anytime we see an o it's definitely part of a surrounded region because any regions that were unsurrounded we already changed them to a t so anytime we see an o we're going to change it to an x so what i'm going to do is we see we see you know this is an x leave it as it is x leave it we see an o down here change it to an x change this to an x this is already an x it's the, change this to an X and this is already an X. When we get to this T, we're going to ignore T's, right? We're only changing O's into X's, right? So that's the second phase of the algorithm. First, we marked T's. Now we're marking X's. Now the last thing we have to do, take a look at our board and take a look at the desired board that we want to return. What's the only difference? Basically, the unsurrounded regions, we change them to T's, but we still want them to be O's. So basically, again, we're going to do a double scan, we're, a, a, a double for loop scan through the entire grid, right? Anytime we see a T, we're going to change it into back into an O. So basically, this T over here would be changed, you know, back into an O, and then we have the desired board that we want. And we can accomplish this. We're going to have to obviously iterate over the entire board like two or three times or something. So the overall time complexity, let's say, is going to be N times M, where these are the dimensions of the board. But that is the entire time complexity. So I hope that this solution makes sense to you. So with that being said, I think we're ready to dive into the code now. Okay, so now let's write out the code and you can see that we don't have to actually return anything. We just have to modify the board in place. With these two dimensional problems, the first thing I usually like to do is just get the dimensions of the board. So let's get the number of rows and let's get the number of columns. I think we're guaranteed that this board is always going to be non-empty. And I'm gonna break this algorithm up into three phases. So the first phase is gonna be to capture the unsurrounded regions. Remember, all the regions that are uh, connected to the border, we need to capture them and change them into T's. So any O is going to be converted into a T for temporary or something. You could do any kind of special character that you want. The second phase is going to be to capture the surrounded regions, right? And we can do that with a double for loop. 
right? We're basically going to be converting O's into X's when we do this, right? All the remaining O's are going to be changed into X's. And the last phase of the algorithm is just going to be to uh, uncapture those unsurrounded regions. So basically, those T's are going to be converted back into O's. So these are the three phases of the algorithm. And by the way, only the first phase is going to need DFS. The second and third phases are going to be for loops only. Let's actually write out that DFS because we're going to be needing it. So let's write out a DFS for capture. We're given some coordinates. Let's call it row and column. We're only going to be converting O's into X's or O's into T's. Now, the main thing is the base case. So let's write it out. Basically, if we go out of bounds, so if row is less than zero or column is less than zero, row is equal to the number of rows, which means it was too big or column is equal to the number of columns, which means it also went out of bounds. And the other case is, remember, we're only capturing O's. So if the board at this position is not an O, then we can also return. So if board at row column is not equal to an O, then we can also return. So this has gotten to be a very long line. Let me shorten it up a little bit. So that is the main base case. And the uh, rest of the function is pretty easy. So if the base case did not execute, then we're going to be changing the uh, value at this uh, position, changing the O into a T. So let's change it into a T. And then we're basically just going to run capture in the four adjacent directions. So I'm just going to type that out. You could do it with a for loop if you wanted to, but I'm lazy. Let's just copy paste this a couple times. So this will be row minus one. This will be column plus one. And the next will be column minus one. So we're looking in all four adjacent directions and capturing only the O's, right? Because that's our base case. If we go out of bounds or if we get to something that's not an O, we're not going to capture it. This function is only going to be run on the border cell. So let's do phase one of the algorithm. Let's do a double nested for loop over the entire grid, even though this is not actually necessary because technically we're only going to be looking at the border of the grid. But I'm just coding it up this way because it's short. it shortens up the code a little. So we're going to be iterating over the entire board. Anytime we see a uh, value that is an O, right? We want O's. So if we get to an O and if this happens to be a border cell, right? So basically we're looking for all the unsurrounded regions which are connected to the border and have O's, right? Because O's are regions. So the way I'm going to figure out if this is connected to the border is basically if row is in this pair of values. Either the row is equal to zero or it's equal to the number of rows minus one. This is a good way to do it in Python, at least I think so, because we're basically doing two comparisons in one. We're checking if row is equal to zero or equal to this. And we can also do it uh, with another thing. So we're, we're checking if this is connected to the border. So we're saying if this is true and uh, row is on the border or uh, the column is in the border. So we can say column is either equal to zero or it's equal to columns minus one. So if this is a border cell, what are we going to do? Well, we're going to capture this region, right? So we can call our helper function capture on this row and column. Easy as that. So we're already done with phase one. We've already captured all unsurrounded regions, converted them into T's. And the next portion of the algorithm is actually going to be very trivial because we're not going to even need DFS. We're just going to do a double nested for loop on the entire grid and convert all O's into X's, right? That's all we got to do. This is capturing the surrounded region. So if we ever see an O, then we convert it into a X, right? We don't even need to run DFS on this because... We don't even have to figure out which regions are surrounded. All remaining O's are guaranteed to be surrounded regions. Last but not least, we have to do phase three of the algorithm, which is just converting the T's back into O's. Let me make some space so that we can fit this all on one screen. Basically, that's going to be trivial as well. I'm just going to copy the above for loop that we did. Instead of checking if it's equal to an O, we're converting T's into O's. So if it's equal to T, convert it back into an O. And believe it or not, that is the entire algorithm. I hope this was broken down and easy to understand. Let's run it to make sure that it works. And as you can see on the left, yes, this solution does work and it is pretty dang efficient. So I really hope that this was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe. It supports the channel a lot and hopefully I'll see you pretty soon. Thanks for watching.